<clears throat> All righty. Another Saturday night. Yes. Another yes. Father's neither, son. Yeah. Neither one of us has a date. Neither not, one of us. Not has that a date. I would be dating because I've I've kind of sworn off. But I thought you you know being the young guy that you are. Kimberly Klein's in the house. Well, God bless you. The Vinny F and I Philly goddess herself. Is not in Vinny the house. from Philly. Justice is in the house. Oh my God. Hey Vinny, could you do me a favor? Um, uh, Jim's Fourth and South. Get me a, a cheese whip. So, Pops. Make it provolone. Tonight's stream. Yeah. The worst time to buy a car. Do you agree, Igor's yeah. in the house, do you agree that right now, because I, I, I came up with tonight's title, do you agree that right now is the worst time to buy a car? Um, uh, yeah, but I think tomorrow could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off tonight's stream with you have talked to quite a few of your friends that are still in the industry. Yes. And you've heard some yeah. boots on the ground stories of what's going on yes. from Chip and then also from, can we name your, your other your other source? Well, Glenn. Yeah, we can Glenn, Glenn says, how come when I watch, I never hear my name? I said, I always mention my dear friend Glenn. Who, who sells Mercedes Benzes in Arizona. I said, what What do you want me to give you your full name and, <laughs> and the name of the dealership and your phone number? I said, how much more do I have to do? But I, I did speak to, uh, to Glenn today, and uh, Glenn is a little uh, frustrated. Glenn is, uh, again, a salesperson at a Mercedes Benz yeah, dealership. At, yep. at, at, at what is a, a large... Mercedes-Benz dealership. And when I say large, typically they have about 600 pre-owned cars and about 400 or 500 new cars. Okay. Okay. And right now they have 300 pre-owned cars and 71 new vehicles on the ground. Wow. Now, if you happen to be in the market for an S class, you would be going to the right place. Yeah. You texted me after you talked to Glenn this yes. morning and you said, you said they've got the, the, the 71 and 55 of them are S classes. <laughs> yes. So he said, so when people come in and they go, my God, you have so much more inventory than anybody else. And then when they go, you know, I'd like to see a C class or an E class. He goes, Hey, how do you feel about an S class? Yeah. Because that's what he's got to sell. Okay. And then you were talking to your friend chip. Yeah. And what did Chip tell you? Uh, Chip, and I know there's some more Mercedes-Benz news you want to get to, yeah. but what did Chip well, tell you? Well, Chip told me that that he was on the call with one of the, well, two of the big shots from Nissan Corporate. Which uh, I have some Nissan news as well to share. Okay. And um, because of the COVID outbreak in a Malaysian chip factory, because, well, I guess Nissan decided they're going to get their chips out of, out of Malaysia, um, the chip factory has been has been shut down. Um, hence, that means that Nissan's production capacity will be shut down, and they said for like a month, and that impacts both Nissan and Infiniti. So uh, they're not going to be building any of those. Happy birthday to Mike Dean's wife. Thank you, Mike. Oh, happy birthday, Mike Dean's wife. Does your wife have a first name? And we can, we, we can, you we know. could also maybe give her the first. The Ray Shevska uh, stamp. Oh, it's a stamp uh, of approval. Because she's married it's to Mike a, Dean. So yeah, you of get course. The stamp of yeah, approval. yeah. She should get the Mike Dean stamp. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe she does. I don't know. But we'll leave that to Mike. Uh, <laughs> All right. Anyway, sorry for, for it. So a Malaysian chip factory yes. or chip plant is yes. is having a COVID outbreak. So yes. Nissan's saying that they're going to be not Well, producing. only because they're shutting down the chip plant. Yeah. So, so they can't get yep. chips. Yep. So they figure, well, what the hell? We might as well just shut down all of our production capacity for you know they're talking about a month for a month yeah so i one of my contacts yes. who's uh, president and ceo of one of the major um uh, uh auto retailers yes him and i were planning on having a conversation next week and, yes. and we were coordinating a date and he's telling me well i can't talk on this day because i'm actually meeting with representatives <laughs> from nissan and i'm thinking to myself well, my dad recently told yeah, me yeah. that nissan's having some issues so yeah. i think i know why he's meeting with Nissan. yeah i think so too they're running out of inventory yes and 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 there's not going to be any inventory to be had yeah and then the other really staggering news yes for for my friend glenn who works at a large mercedes-benz dealership yeah in arizona um Mercedes-Benz informed their dealer body yesterday uh, that for the 22 model year, there will 2022, be, yeah, 2022, there will be no V8 engine production. Now, the V8 engines go in the AMG models, they go in G wagons, they go in the larger SUVs. So, um, it's a popular engine choice. Yeah, at at 
Mercedes Benz. Yep. Um, but it's only going to be available for a few S classes next year. Yeah. Other than that, not going to be available as an engine choice. So, I mean, there are these moments in history where industries change drastically in a short period of time. For yes. example, yes. when there was no automobile, you had horse and buggy for, I don't know, thousand yeah. i mean a long 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 time right? and when they had a chip shortage they just introduced the male horse to the female horse and they made more horses that way yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> i just ad-libbed you with yourself thank you um, and, <laughs> <laughs> um but the point i'm trying to make is that yeah. then once automobiles came around yeah. right yeah. there was like we got rid of horse and buggy immediately. It's yeah. like everyone's driving cars. And now for the past hundred years, everyone's been driving cars. I think this chip shortage is going to yeah. move us in a similar way. Like something meaningful is happening. And I think we're seeing it in terms of, okay, well, we're going to carry less inventory and people are going to pay for it. And that's just become the reality. And I don't know if it's necessarily going to stick five years from now, six years from now, but it's going to stick remainder of this year because there's not enough supply, no chips. And it's probably going to be here next year as well. Well, it, it's certainly, I mean, when Mercedes-Benz comes out and tells their dealer body there's not going to be V8s, um, you know, because of production issues. And I'm, I'm assuming most of those production issues are related to chips in one way or another. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that tells you for the 22 model year that, that, yeah, this is going to continue. And I was, um, I saw. So, so if I may. Yeah, please, please. So, if. The, the title of tonight's video, this is the worst time in history to ever buy a car. Be sure to tune in next week when it's yeah. even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 well, that will be until tomorrow or Monday. And, and, it's, and so it, it's probably only going to get worse and worse. Uh, so I saw on there really quick, any news for, on BMW for this uh, uh, upcoming year? And, and the news at BMW is that they have tasked their dealer body oh yeah this to, is crazy to cut down on the amount of service loaners that they have can you explain a, what a service loaner a is service and... loaner is when you buy a bmw and you take your car in for service the dealer is supposed to provide you with a courtesy car the courtesy car is supposed to be well a bmw now uh, my buddy chip at, at their at one of their stores they have they have 120 BMWs in their service loaner fleet for when their service customers come in to drop off a car. BMW has informed them that for every BMW that's in service loaner fleet above 39, the maximum. So typically they have 120. 120 so they have to only cut back 80. 81 actually they have to cut back 81 cars out of their service loaner fleet because for every one more than 39 every every one bmw in service loaner fleet more than 39 they will reduce their monthly allocation by one new BMW. So, so just to make sure everyone that's that's watching this to make the dealership yes. works with obviously the oem to get their allocation of inventory every yes. single month. And that is the lifeblood of the dealership because like we're seeing right now, if you don't have cars to sell, you can't make money. Yeah. And so they're telling them, you need to take vehicles out of your service owner fleet and yes. sell them yes. and not use them as loaners. Yes. To which your buddy Chip was saying he just bought- Bought 40 uh, used Camrys. So for the that, service loaner for fleet. For the service loaners. For the BMW dealerships. Yes. So that they can make sure that they, they retain their allocation of new vehicles. By not having more than 39 new BMWs in their service loaner. Imagine taking your 7 Series in and then get handed over a, uh, a Camry. I, 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 will tell you, I will tell you a great story. Please. I love okay. Stories. This goes back many, 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 many years ago when I was working at... Happy birthday, Joey. Happy birthday, Joey. When I was working at Acura North, well, at that time it was it was Scottsdale Acura. We were on McDowell Road, and the dealership across the street from us on 68th Street was our Jaguar um, Rolls Royce dealership. Yep. Okay, and so they decided that it would be cheaper for them to use Acura Integras as their service loaners for their Jaguar and, and Rolls-Royce customers. So one day, yeah. one day, uh, the vice president, uh, we get a, uh, this uh, unbelievable email from, uh, find out who's driving a particular Integra. Yeah. Um, because 
I just saw him pull out of the service drive like a bat out of hell. <laughs> well, I, I won't tell you which Phoenix Suns player it was, <laughs> um, but it was a Phoenix Suns player who had dropped off his Rolls Royce. <laughs> and got put into an and accurate he got put Integra. into an Acura Integra, and he was a little pissed. Okay, um, so you know if 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 you're driving a BMW, if you if you're in a seven series, if you're in a five series, if you're in an X five, yeah, and and you come in and they go, hey, here's your 2018 Camry to drive for the next couple of days. Those people aren't going to be happy. But regardless, the point being, BMW corporate is taking measures to make sure that they can convince their dealerships to actually sell more vehicles, not retain them. Yes. That's and, how desperate they are. for. for and vehicles. and here here here's what else. Hmm. Um, at one of their collision repair centers um, where they had an enterprise rental car agency on site yep. so that when people brought in their their damaged vehicles, they could just uh, enterprise said that uh, we're closing our office at that facility because they don't have any rental cars for their. Okay. So, so, so yep. uh, they asked chip to, to buy them 20, <laughs> 20 Camrys just for, for the collision center. So they could put people in cars. Two comments. One being, yes. I went on a date last night and the person that I went on a date with, she has a rental car right now because oh her God. car, yeah. someone ran into it with a scooter anyway. Yeah. And she was explaining to me. It like, wasn't your scooter. No, it wasn't. I didn't hit her. I didn't hit her. <laughs> Is that that'd how be, you met her? a cool way to meet someone though. <laughs> uh, but she was explaining to me how she went to Enterprise yes. to get a rental car and they, like she pre-ordered it and like pre- Doesn't could, matter. You know what car they ended up putting her in? Uh, what? One that used to back in 2019 have a huge market day supply. Uh, a Mitsubishi of some kind. A Mitsubishi Mirage. A yeah. Mirage. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, so rental car, there's a shortage there as well, yes. like we were talking about. And this brings to light for me, Dad, yes. the importance of if you're going to buy a used vehicle right now, yes. we say it time and time again, getting it up on a lift, getting a pre-purchase inspection done. There are rougher condition cars. And I'd like to actually pull up the Black Book report. Because we've been talking about the new car side. Yes. Let's talk about the used car side. And then I want to hit on this question from Jack. I yeah. wonder if dealerships will be furloughing workers soon. I really want your take on that. We have some other questions back on the YAA community as well that we'll yeah. hit on that are in the same vein. But let's look at the Black Book well, data. The, well, can I, can I answer Jack's question real quick? Sure. The answer is their, their low-performing salespeople will be biting the dust. Okay. They, they will be looking for work elsewhere. Um I, I would imagine, and, and uh, this is just me spitballing here, uh, I would imagine dealerships are going to figure out ways to market their service departments uh, more than they ever had so that they can increase their service business. Because I, I don't know anybody in the dealership area that will tell you they ever have enough good quality technicians. And so they can't afford to be furloughing any of those people so they will do whatever they can in in order to figure out ways to keep the service department a bustling aspect of the dealership yep yep here you go actually let's read this yeah. a year ago when your employer told you they were furloughing you they were firing you and only bringing back a skeleton crew they absolutely needed to get over work remember because so if for those of you that are new to the channel and we've got quite a few people for example yeah. jay who's here it's his first yeah. life welcome to everyone yes. we do this every saturday night me and my dad have been- yeah because we we we, 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 don't get, we don't got dates. We, 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 we have no life. Uh, no, we love doing this. Um, yes. But my dad, yeah. before his last stint in the dealership, was yeah. actually doing like like part-time uh, like customer retention work yes. for the dealership. Yes, leasing long and you, portfolio. you got let go at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, because they saw no point in, in keeping me. And so if, I think what we're, we're at this a yeah. new and interesting inflection point. Yeah. Back then it was, well, we don't know what the heck's going to happen, so let's cut staff, let's cut costs. Yes. Now we're in a position where it's, we have no clue when we're going to have inventory. Why would we host and, and house a bunch of salespeople? The one rationale to maybe keep them on board is like their minimum paycheck each month is not that much. Well, but still, at, at the very least, you have to you you have to pay the minimum wage. At the very least, Igor is coming in massive service yeah. business. Igor runs a dealership. Yeah. Uh, lots of very old cars coming out of the woodworks on the road. Service departments are having the best year ever. Yeah, definitely. So, All right, let's 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 transition. Thank you, Igor. Let's transition. Uh, um, yeah, I, n- nobody can transition better than I can. Because um, I went from being employed to unemployed to well, being employed again to being an advisor. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're on payroll, man. You're I, know, on payroll. I know. I know. I got. I know. You I got, got paid on. I got uh, paid yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I got it was, paid. Too. It was awesome. wonderful. I know. It's an yeah. incredible yeah. thing. It took yeah. us a year and a half. But yeah, yeah. You know. 
Okay, this is on the used car side. It only means your your sister and you will inherit more eventually. Fingers across. Well, yeah. I want you to live a long time. Okay, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, I would hope so. Used car market <laughs> report. We get this data from BlackBook. If yes. you're interested in BlackBook data uh, usually, over here, you can use the YAA, um, uh, join YAA, yeah. become a member, value yeah. your trade in BlackBook data. It's all right here. But what I wanted to look at that is we saw wholesale prices continue to go down again. Yes. Week over week. So yes. wholesale used car prices this is are going down. Yes. Like that's, it's, yes. it's a this trend is the at this fifth, point. This is a fifth week. So yes. I, that definitely qualifies as a trend. However, if you scroll yeah. down, we're yes. not going to look at wholesale. We're going to look at retail price changes. Oh. That's this chart. Yeah. The purple line. This is week over week retail price changes. Yeah. This is where we started to see a slight like decline. decline in, in retail asking prices. In this most recent week, we reached a new high. Yes. God so bless on, you. So retail used car prices are back up to, to all-time highs. Yes. Even though we're seeing wholesale prices. Yes. We're, we're seeing wholesale prices go down. Retail prices are going up um, so that, um, yeah, this is the worst time ever to buy a car. <laughs> Very thoughtful donation from Lakewood, Ed. Well, thank you. How, is that Lakewood, New Jersey? How will all these 2021 sitting in fields affect 2022 production levels? There seems to be such large inventory that they're going to have to unload at a discount. We've talked about this a bit. Yeah. If there is a big uh, uh, supply chain influx of chips, there's going to be a lot of discounting going on because you're going to have mixed model years and you're going to have all sorts of vehicles hitting dealer lots. The likelihood of that happening doesn't seem high. I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure. Uh, and the reason I'm not sure is, I first of all, there's like fifty to 80,000 trucks that are sitting around waiting for chips. Which the, the person who greenlighted that decision, it's like... It's, it's the same person that it's the same person who must have worked at Acura when they said, "What do you think about the ZDX?" <laughs> <laughs> Google search ZDX, very yeah. very yeah. successful. Um, so it's it's not like they're suddenly going to get their hands on an extra fifty to eighty thousand chips. Well, each vehicle takes whatever, however many three thousand of them. Yeah, what, however many, but but they're not. It's not like all those cars are going to get completed. At once. Yep. Okay. So there, there will be some getting completed, but it's not going to be all of a sudden you're going to have 50,000 extra cars hitting the, the market. They're not. Yep. It might be an extra thousand cars that make it into dealer inventory one week, another 500 the following week, another thousand the week after that. Yep. And, and when you consider the number of four dealerships there are, that doesn't equate to a lot of cars at one time in any given week for any given dealership. Yeah, if you go back and check out the Market Day Supply video, the, the one where we said that there is no inventory in the United States, yeah. the one with the Subaru logo in the thumbnail, yes. that's the video to watch to really understand the dynamics. Because you're right, if a 1,000 vehicles make it on dealer lots, it doesn't really move the needle that much. And so we now, don't how many How many Ford stores are there? No, I mean, it's not even just Ford, right? Even 1,000, yeah. there's 10,700 Subarus for sale right now in the United States. Even well, one, no, that was on... That was on August 1st. There could yeah. be less. Yeah, there's probably less right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even a thousand more of those is not really going to move the needle. No. Right. And, and so do we have an expectation that with the prior model year coming in or with the new model year turnover happening that, that we're going to see this, you know, incentive from the manufacturers to add so. back promotions? I don't think so. I no. don't think so because there's going to continue to be a shortage of cars. What, and it what, won't matter whether it's a 2021 or a 2022. The, the one thing that can move the needle? Is if people stop buying cars, that's the one thing that moves the needle. That's going to get tonight's yeah. uh, second, I yeah. think, but possibly the third. Yeah, yeah buddy. buddy. I mean, that's the truth. The yeah. only way it's supply and demand. The only way it goes down is if the demand, you know, the demand stops. We've had questions that are coming through the chat pops. Okay, from Colin. Okay. When will the market go back down? From Kevin. When should I buy a car? It's. Imp I mean, we we're bad at this. Like, let's just be very upfront. Like, we've done videos on this. We're off, but we know it's not. Maybe it is today because it's going to continue to get worse. What's your take on that? Listen, uh, six months ago, I said it, it, we're probably looking at 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Uh, six months later, I think we're probably looking at 12 to 18 months. <laughs> I, I just, you know, with the news that's coming out about uh, about the, the Malaysian chip factory being shut down, the news that's coming out from Mercedes-Benz, I mean, these are all indications that – this isn't going to be solved quickly. Yeah. Um, it's going to take time. And and the one thing 
none of us want to wait on is that time. We are, as a society, uh, people that are used to getting what we want and getting it now. I remember back in the in the seventies, there was I was living in Glassboro, New Jersey at the time. Okay, and there was a a, a stereo store that had a turntable, a record player. We had records back then. A I'm wondering where this is going. A turntable yeah. that they had one in stock that I wanted. It was the winter time. There was a snowstorm. I mean, literally a bad snowstorm. Okay. And I got in my damn car and I drove from Glassboro, New Jersey to Cherry Hill, New Jersey in a snowstorm, slipping and sliding so I could get that turntable now because i wasn't going to wait a couple days for i don't know for him to clean the roads and everything else we are we have been we have been conditioned to not wait for anything a new iphone comes out where they announce the new iphone is going to come out and what happens people line up at the apple store days in advance i do they need a new iphone you're like very aggressive on the point that's like everyone agrees with (laughs) Okay. The storm of 1978. Yes. Yes, Celeste. The storm. The storm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go uh, back. Yeah. Let's go back. One of the things that we're going to do tonight is we have, if you're not familiar with it, yeah. we have the- I can tell you the Black Horse Pike was a mess that night. The YAA <laughs> community. Um, the link is down in the description, but the YAA community is incredible. I can't thank everyone who's a part yeah. of it. Space recently came onto the team to help just- We'll take a moment, you know, 341 comments. Space is here to help you. Justice. Let's look at Justice's profile really quick because Justice is here to help you. Uh, 216 comments and very funny posts on the community as well. We've got auto advocates in the community here to help you. We also have community members in tonight's live stream making sure that I know not to stifle my dad when he's on a roll. No, thank you. I'll get better about that. So if you are in the market to buy, or even if you're just interested in this whole process, work with our auto advocates, work with the YA team. We're here to help. Yes. Let's answer some of the questions that came through on tonight's post. Sound good? Yes. All right. This first one is yeah. going to be from Marty. I've always wondered where do dealers get their educations and all in-house or are they sent to deal closed school or something? Um, all well, the trainings in house? No, no, not at all. Oh yeah, like Joe Verde or like- yeah, Joe Verde and and uh, and Jackie Cooper. So they're trainers. They're they're, they're you know, Steve Richards. There are trainers out there Who? That, that go to dealerships. Who? I'm not. And, <laughs> and they go to dealerships and they and they train. Uh, and and then there's then there's the manufacturers. Yeah, where where they have training and and um, all the manufacturers and they and. And the dealerships are required to send um, personnel occasionally to these uh, when they're in the in the area. Um, so y- yeah, it's not just all in house because if it was in house, these folks would never get trained. <laughs> um, a great a great story actually is Justice, who's now yeah. a part of the YAA team. Yes, he before he became a part of the car business, he watched YAA videos, went to deal school, and then used that as part of his training. I don't yeah. know, Justice, if you want to put that into the chat, but anyway. We then have from Marty, he said, uh, also, are you worried that as you get to be more of a presence that dealers will develop a strategy for dealing with YAA members? We've had some, there's a video we have on the channel. I'll I'll see if if we can find it, but it was actually of a, I think his name was Mario. He's a salesperson who is a YAA community member who sold a car to another YAA community member. So it is happening. Um, Uh, But do I, do I think, um, I I think the hope is, hmm. the hope is, is that, we can impact the industry enough so that dealerships might contact us and ask us for best practices as to how to be more transparent with customers to make purchasing and selling cars easier and and less time consuming. Yeah, our whole thing from day one has been for everyone involved. So empower the consumer, but yeah. also make it easier for the dealer. Well, and make the dealership understand that by by dealing with an empowered consumer, you're it does, really it is easier. You're really 
making it more efficient for, for the dealership. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's like our, our, our ML. Yes. All right. We've got a question here from Colleen, new member here. I'm not fully up to speed on the jargon yet. I apologize in advance. I'm looking for a Yukon or Tahoe, possibly an expedition. Uh, cargo space inventory is severely limited, as you know. To make matters worse, a tornado hit a local GMC Chevy yes. dealership yes. Yes. and damaged inventory. Am I yes. better off paying the high prices now in the event that the used car prices continue to rise before normalizing? Uh, probably. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the strategy there would be run those market price reports yes. back at, at, at uh, on the website, yamember.com, join yamember.com, run the market price reports, find the ones that have the highest negotiability score, use the email templates. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll actually negotiate, but no, no, but, but still you, request but you keep the trying price. and you yep. keep pushing and you keep asking for more. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Drew here, new member. Thanks for the great support. That's what we're here to do. I posted my deal in the review my deal section and got some great feedback from the community. We are finalizing the details on it and should be picked up early next week. Well, okay. congratulations. The that, community yes. is going to get a quick little the ring chef's got stamp. Stamp of love. Uh, uh, because that's awesome. That's, that's what it's all. That That's the whole idea behind the community. Yeah, post Behind deals. starting this. Behind getting people involved in it so that everybody can help. It doesn't just, it's not just me or you or Mario or Kimberly or Justice that are trying to help everybody. It's everybody helping each other. That That's the whole idea behind this. There's strength in numbers. There's power in these numbers. Give me a hug. Hug me. Oh, shit. Hug me. That's what we're here for. It's, it's, that's it's, beautiful. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I mean, we can't, <laughs> whatever. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Sarah says, can you tell us the best time of year to buy a new car? I'm planning on trading my new car. Uh, best time to <laughs> buy a car. Here it is. Yes, Sarah, I can indeed. Yeah, look at that. In the olden days, it was the it was it was the week between Christmas and New Year's was the absolute best time to buy a car. Yeah, nowadays, who the hell knows? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, back to drill. Yeah. You still can, you know, get a good deal. Get yes. the communities to support yes. you. Yes. Rich, is it normal for, normal for dealerships? Excuse me, to sell pre a pre-owned car before they have the title in hand? Yes, my wife may be buying a certified pre-owned 2018 Rav Four that was turned in at end of lease. Mm -hmm. We know. Uh, we now know it's w the worst time to buy, but we are, geez, at least I'm struggling. But we have yeah. been getting by with one car since she turned her in her last lease in May 2020, and we are now at the point where we just need, okay. She looked at the car last Saturday and put the down payment on it. Uh, they told her, excuse me, that they would that they didn't have the title yet, but they would in the following weeks. Well, here we are a week later, and they still don't have the title. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a common practice. Well, it's a common practice for dealerships to trade a car, and if there's a payoff on the trade, yeah, um, to go ahead and send the payoff and and wait for the title to come in. And yes, it's a common practice for dealers to to uh, to uh, recondition the cars, do the safety inspections, put them on the lot, and sell them. And oftentimes they get sold before the title has actually come in from the from the prior in lending institution and before it's had the dealerships actually had the opportunity to switch it into their name. It's, it's not supposed to be done that way, but it's, it's just an absolutely common practice in the automobile industry that it is done that way. Um, and, and very on rare occasion, does it happen that, that there's a, a, an issue with the incoming title? Um, we uh, just filmed a video, though, about this yes. that'll come out um, with Miss Kimberly Klein. That'll come out next week um, that kind of touches on this. Yes. And you and her both explain, Igor saying, yeah, it's very common. You and her both explain that you've had some instances where it's taken upwards of a month. Yes. And, and you know, and, and so there can be difficulties, uh, but it, it, but it, it's, it's more of a rare Let's do a quick. Uh, let's do a quick hit right here, pops from the uh, live yeah. chat. Could you explain how Carfax accident report with no damage affects the price of a twenty thousand dollars vehicle? I just want to chime in with a little fun fact. Salvage title you've said affects the vehicle price by about fifty yes. percent. What is an accident on the title uh, or on it, the Carfax? It, it, it depends. It depends on on the severity of the accident, and and Carfax. Um, oftentimes will tell you if it was a minor accident, if it was moderate damage, if it was major damage. Um, and it, it also depends on how well the damage was repaired. And if to the appraiser's naked eye, uh, that there's waves in the body or the, 
or or the car is suddenly two or three different shades of the same color, yeah, yeah, that's going to negatively impact the value of the trade. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, yeah, bonjour, Arash. Hey, Arash. Yeah, yeah, Arash on a well-deserved vacation. Then back to work. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the community. Um, let's see here. We've got a question from Lemonicus. Menicus. Ray, if you purchased a few... God. Yeah. Ray, if you purchased a few almond trees and gave them to your landscaping neighbor to take care of, how long would it be till you move out? Oh, probably the next day. You know, because I know he'd have the water running and he'd have the edger going and he'd have the leaf blower. That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. I had a, I had a very controversial Instagram story today. Steve yes, JC. Did. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, people weren't on my side. Steve mm-hmm. JC, timing, no pun intended, is yeah. critical. Wife and I are uh, wife and I are on the ten year plan. Each gets a new car every ten years with five year spacing. Wow. She, uh, just got hers in March. Thanks for the help on that. Glad to be able to. Now my 2015 Acura TLX with 144 thousand miles. Yeah, started getting an error code for which Acura wants to replace the transmission. Sixty three hundred buckaroos. Yeah. yeah, Carvana says the car with the tranny issue is about is worth around seven thousand and nine thousand without the problem. Going to get. Uh, to put near 7000 with tax into it, they said it's an odd cl- uh, Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy a car at the worst possible time. Help. Yeah, what would you do if you're in a situation where kind of almost mechanically totaled in terms of price? Do you I, move on or do you buy I, I just I just loved customers that would come in, you know, with their 10-year-old car. And they go, you know, we get a new car every 10 years. And I go, oh, so you're on the 10-year plan. You get a new car every 10 years whether you need it or not. <laughs> you know, um, it's... If if the if if you the were me- saying take the money, yeah. If if the mechanical issues are, if the, it's simple because Carvana is telling you the car is worth ten thousand or, or 9, worth seven thousand dollars with the tranny issues and nine thousand with the tranny repaired, and it would cost you Six, seven. Uh, no, sixty three hundred. Yeah, plus tax, so it would cost you seven thousand to repair it, so you could pick up two grand. Yeah, I'm not spending seven to to break the ten year plan. Yeah, it's costing you five grand to do that. So, yeah, take the money and run, trade it in, go, go you know, go do something with it. But um, my suggestion would be is to not take it to that Acura deal. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> to trade it. Jeff says, salutations, gentlemen. Looking to order either a Charger Scat Pack or Hellcat in November. Any news as far as any new incentives coming anytime soon? <laughs> Let me double check. We actually post the uh, rebates and incentives weekly here on the rebates and incentives channel. So let's see. I don't think there are. I'd be I'd be shocked. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if there's no cars, there's no need to incentivize selling them. Uh, that would be Stellantis. Yeah, I don't yeah. even see. Oh, there Stellantis. Let me see. Let me zoom in. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Char- there's yeah. on the Durango yeah. Charger. Yeah, uh, up to two grand. Up to two grand. Yeah. So yes, there yeah. are some programs right now. Yeah, up to two thousand dollars. But that's on 2021 models, oh, and yes. if you're gonna, if you're hoping to get a car in November, um, 2020 models, um, up to seventeen fifty. So yeah, there's not much, but yeah. there's some some yeah, there yeah. are some programs. Yeah, but if 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 November, you're looking, yeah, yeah, if you're looking to get a car in November, there might not be a 2021, uh, and my guess is that there might be some type of small incentive, but I don't think there's going to be large incentives. Crystal asks, I'm currently looking to order my dream car and was given MSRP MSRP plus registration license yeah. tax, correct? Yep. Most places I talked to were marking up anywhere from 1500 to 15000 but I was able to secure it MSRP. Should I take it or just hold out until the market improves? Well, uh, you might have to hold out 12 to 18 months. So, so, take so MSRP today is is probably a good deal on an ordered car because the dealer really doesn't want to do an order because if they do an order, it it, it robs them in their minds of the opportunity to put all their dealer installed accessories and crap on a car because you can't put it on an ordered car if the customer didn't ask for it. Yep. Um, So they they lose uh, some additional potential profits on an ordered car. Yep. But you must, you must negotiate the selling price, the agreed upon selling price when you order the car. Don't just order the car and, and, 
and then hope when the car comes in that you can discuss what the pricing is going to be. Okay, and I'm actually really glad you brought that up because I still peruse, even though we got banned. Me and my dad got banned from Reddit. I got I'm not, banned. No, you're not I got banned. banned. Yeah, I, dad, I'm not banned. I get I get stuff from them every day that I don't open. Well, we should post stuff because it would be helpful. Anyway, this okay. is they have a car sales like a, a, yeah, a yeah, Reddit yeah, community yeah, where yeah, a sub a sub a channel, yeah. yeah subreddit. And this actually just happened to this yeah. poor person. So a few months ago, I ordered and paid for. It. A 2022 Bronco Badlands. So today the dealership called me and told me that I need to pay another ten thousand over what I paid for. Are they going to cancel my deal and give me and give me my money back? Well, the reason the reason he gave me was because someone else said they would pay fifteen thousand dollars over. Well, that's that, that, and then no, they, yeah, that, that, they, that they, doesn't that, that no. They so should, I they talked should. to my family member who's a lawyer. He mm-hmm. said I can take it to court and I have a high chance of losing because nowhere in the contract do I have a VIN. Uh, I just got home from the dealership and I got to talk to the manager and he basically said to me that I can wait until another one is ordered, which might be another year, or I can take my money back plus a $1,000 Visa gift card and that I'm free to spend my money in court, but that's not going to change anything either because it's sold for 15000 over sticker and they are not going to miss out on that profit because the guy who bought it is one of their biggest customers. Basically, they'd rather piss on my dreams than piss off the big fish guy. Wow. Yeah. So this is the reality. You, you what's know what going I would do? Right now. You know what I would do? I would I would take back my money. I would take that Visa gift card. I would sell that Visa gift card. That, we should that get thousand dollar channel. That, we, that that thousand dollar Visa gift card. Maybe you get five hundred for it. Maybe you get seven hundred fifty for it. And then I would take out ads in every local digital format to <sighs> say, "Look what this dealer did to me." We. We, um, I wish I wasn't banned from Reddit or I would reach out to that person. Yeah. If someone watching this is on Reddit and wants to reach out to that person, we should, we, I, we're not, ba- we're not dealer bashers. We're not dealer no, bashers. No, but there, there, but there's some things that are not good to do and things that are uh, not decent. And we would be thrilled to be able to talk about that dealership and what they did. You to know, you. that extra $15,000 that they might make on this particular vehicle could end up costing them $150,000 in lost future sales because the public finds out about that they put their profits and everything else above ever taking care of a customer whose money they've been sitting on. You tell them you want your money back plus interest. Yeah. But what's interest rate right now? Uh, Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) We've got AG wants to know why were we banned from Reddit? Because... Yeah, we got people asking why we yeah. were banned. No, you were banned. Okay, I was, I was, I was banned. never banned. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Jen, Jen. Yeah. Uh, What's this we stuff, Batman? We were. I was banned Thank from Reddit you. because my dad wrote this thing. I forget what it was about, but it was about like how to finance a car or something like that. And I posted it on the personal finance subreddit. And we were on the front page of Reddit. It had 10,000 upvotes in like two hours. It was incredible because my dad's a great teacher. Yeah, but you linked to our channel. And as I saw it taking off, I put – this is back when when YA, we had how many subscribers? Maybe 1,000. No, we yeah. had we had like 10. Okay. This is how we got our first 100 subscribers was I, I edited the post and put, oh, if you like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that got me banned. Yeah, because um, so you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to promote yourself. Yeah. So we're banned from, from sure. I'm banned you're from You're banned from Reddit because you're a self-promoter. Yeah, that's why we've been doing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> All right, so we've got Crystal. Our, our take is go go do the deal. Yeah. Kirk and West by God, Virginia. My local Subaru dealer has three. <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. Three new cars, all a sense. Wow, incredible. A year ago, they consistently had over 50 new Subarus on a lot. Glad I don't need a car. Yeah. Crazy. I'm glad you don't either because now, from what I understand, according to this week's live stream, now yes. is the worst time ever to buy a car until <laughs> until <Next week>. tomorrow. <laughs> Brian says, hey, guys, thanks for all you do. I found a couple weeks back, found you a couple weeks back, and I've already learned a ton. Glad to help. My question, I know you said leasing is better than buying right now, especially since right now is apparently the worst time to – ever buy a car. Yes. But is leasing with the intent to buy at the end of the lease a bad idea? Let's talk about that, Dad, because we have recommended. Well, typically it it is a bad idea because invariably you will end up paying more for the vehicle that way. Yep. Okay. Um, So if, if if your plan is to buy a car and keep it for eight or 10 years, um, even in in these uh, dire times when it comes to pricing, it would probably make more sense to buy the car. If 
if you're thinking, um, our, my thinking is to mitigate these crazy times that if you were to lease a car for three years, in three years' time, the market should normalize and you'll be able to start fresh and you won't be the proud possessor of, I don't know, thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of negative. Being equity. upside down in that loan is what yes. we're really afraid yes. of. Yeah. That's that's the thing to avoid. Yeah. That's what the so, does. so, but it it rarely does it work out that if you lease the car and make those 36 payments and then buy the vehicle for the residual at the end, that 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 doesn't end up costing you more money than just having purchased the vehicle in the first place. Uh, a thousand percent. We're going to answer a question that came through here, Pops, in the live chat from Seth. Opinion on buying a salvage title car from Theft, if taken to get an inspection, it all comes back good. Have you? Can you get a salvage title from a car being? Well, you could, especially if, especially if the uh, insurer paid for it. I, I will cite a perfect example for you. I this hope. goes. This goes back many years, and uh, probably uh, speaks poorly about some of my management skills at the time. But this was this was in the early '80s yeah. when I was at Admiral Nissan, and uh, one day we get. Uh, state police show up and they ask us about a particular car. And we go, <laughs> oh, well, I know this yeah. story. And we go, well, we don't have that car. It was a Z car. We don't, we don't have the car. He says, well, we do. It's a recovered theft. Well, we didn't know it was missing. It had been missing for over a year. Um, so uh, what happens is if you know it's missing and you report it to your insurance company that it's missing, after 30 days, they will pay you for it. We didn't get paid for it because we didn't know it was missing. So there wasn't a salvage title. Gotcha. But if a dealership had been paid or somebody had been paid for a vehicle that was stolen, and then ultimately after 30 days it gets recovered, yes, the, the insurance company could insist that it be a salvage title because it had been declared a total loss and paid for. Interesting. Okay. However, yes. it'll still affect the value of the vehicle because it has oh, a yes. salvage title. Yes. Yes. But mechanically, yes. it's not going to be as impacted you know, I, as like a flood salvage title. No, no, no. But I, to, to this day, I still can't figure out why the owner didn't fire me over that. <laughs> like, like, don't you do inventory monthly? Uh, we do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 80s, man. Different time. Yeah. We've got a question from Mark here. Again, these are back on the YA community. Like we'll do live chat after we get through this, but there were a lot of comments. Actually, yeah. we're almost. Yeah, there's a there's more popping up. Okay, yeah. Um, this is from Mark looking to get a 2021 Rav4 hybrid. We did one of these recently in uh, the most marked up vehicles. There was one selling yes. for four uh, twenty thousand dollars over MSRP. Yeah. Best offers I can get from several dealers are MSRP plus market adjustment of three to five K. I'm in Southern California. Any tips on getting the market adjustment taken off or just paying MSRP? What's well, considered a good deal for new cars in this market? Thanks, guys. Love the channel. Um, you know, the, the unfortunate reality is is that the de most dealerships, especially in Southern California, which is which is a big Toyota state. Yeah. Um, they know that if you don't pay the three to four or five thousand dollars over, that the next guy might. Um, perhaps you can you can get them to to take half of it off, most of it off. Um, I, I you know, God bless you. If you can get it down to uh, to just MSRP, you're doing great. Uh, you might have to beg, borrow, and steal. You might have to just pester them every day or every hour of every day, saying, "Come on, have you have you come to your senses yet?" And you realize I'll be a great customer of yours forever. Da, 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 da. And just instead of them calling you saying, "Are you ready to make a deal?" You call them every day or several yeah. times a day and go, "Have you thought about it some more? Are you ready to make a deal? Are you ready to knock that?" And in? obviously, going yeah. out of state if you can, like see if there are any dealerships in Nevada yeah. that you might be able to make a deal with. Yeah. Are there any? In Nevada, excuse me, or in uh, Arizona. I mean, those or are your New other Mexico yeah. or wherever, you know, but it's it's just it's difficult right now and they know it. Oh, they they everyone knows it. All right. We've got a question here from Joe Pomps. Wow, what a headline. Here's my story. Last July 2020, I ordered a new 2021 Bronco Badlands yeah. with the Sasquatch package. Oh, is that a big Big package. It's a big package. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Ford sent me an email letting me know that I won't get it until sometime next year. And will my order change? And my order will change to a 2022 model. Okay. This is mostly due to the hardtop production fiasco. Yes, with all yeah, because they have to replace place. every hardtop. Therefore, they've stopped production, with the exception of the first editions. I've also been reading about uh, 
uh, I've also been reading about order holders getting surprise additional dealer markup of ten to twenty thousand dollars. That was the Reddit story we were just sharing a moment yes, ago. Yes. With all the mishaps, production issues, and potential dealer games, I've decided to buy my second choice four by four as I can't wait a year. So today I placed an order with one thousand dollar deposit for a twenty twenty two Lexus GX four sixty. You know, in in the long run, you'll probably be <laughs> yeah. better off, and this will be a blessing in disguise. Given that they are not uh, the dealer's lots at the moment, and with limited inventory on the way, they will not negotiate. I have an OTD purchase order paying full MSRP, fourteen hundred in dealer fees, paying fabric for six hundred dollars, nitrogen for ninety six. Hey, 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 hey! If I may, yeah, okay. If it's an ordered car. Okay. Go for they, it. They don't Go have to it. put the paint and fabric on it. They don't have to put the nitrogen in the tires. They don't have to do any yeah, of that buddy. stuff. And the only reason I know that is because when you work at a mini dealership, when you run a mini dealership, you you do a lot of ordering. And you don't charge people for the dealer installed stuff on an order. You only charge them for that stuff if it has been sitting on the ground and you had already done it. So you can tell them, yes, I'll pay MSRP. Uh, be sure to tell your, your staff not to put the paint and fabric on it, not to put the nitrogen in the tires, not to do any of that stuff. So let's, let's be clear about this because more and more, like Ford, for example, is moving more towards this. We're going to uh, factory order. Yeah. Let's, let's push back as a community and as educated car buyers. Let's push back. What you just said to a T, the line of from the sales manager, from the salesperson, well, we put it on all the cars. Yeah. Well, you don't put it on the order yeah, car. You don't put it on the order car because you don't have it yet. And yeah. I'm telling you, I don't want it. Yes. So, so here I have the option to tell you I don't want it. So you're not going to install it. If the it. industry is going to move towards factory order, this yeah. is the area where we yes. can most certainly push back. You yes. want to add on window tint? Yeah. Cool. Tell me what the price. Okay, I'm not interested. I yeah. don't want it. Yes. And don't tell me. You, you say low jack's already on the car? Yeah. Well, it's not because yeah. it's not on your I, lot yet. Yeah, because it hasn't been built yet. This, you know what? I, I that just struck me is that's as the industry moves in that direction, that's an area where we can we can really push back, and yes. it makes sense. It's yeah. a logical argument. Yeah, it's it's one thing if the vehicle's on the lot and and during their normal pre delivery inspection, uh, the shop knows to do that. But if you if you every car gets a repair order, and if you write on the repair order, this is a sold unit, the customer does not want this, this, and this, then they won't install it, okay? And they don't have to charge you for it if it's never been installed. So push back on that. Especially when they're making 10% on the, sp on the spread from MSRP. Yeah. At least. We've got a thoughtful donation from Rob Reed. If the Bronco buyer had a signed price slip, would they have had a leg to stand on? It sounds like because they didn't have a VIN on it, they didn't. Yeah, I'm but you sure. couldn't have a VIN on a factory order. There is no VIN to be had on a factory order. But you can negotiate the price. And I would think, actually, the legal advice that, that, the, that he got from his lawyer, I, I, I would think that would be bad advice because the first thing you would say to, to the judge is, well, how can you have a VIN on a factory order where it hasn't been built yet? But we haven't agreed upon price, and it's been signed by the dealership. And I gave them my money. And I gave them my money to be able to buy it at this price. That should be legal and binding. There couldn't have been a VIN because it hadn't been built yet. And a VIN isn't assigned until it goes into production. Papa Chef's got toss on your headphones. Right you know, right. we need to have we need to have a sit down with that attorney. You 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 are just whoops. Oh, Zach oh. hit a wrong button. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, that does like. The ring. I wanted to give you a lap over. Your 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 energy tonight. Yeah, I'm on a roll, buddy. You're really you're really yeah. doing quite good. Yeah. That's we cool. also had a great question come in from Andy. It takes over the screen. We go live on Facebook as well. Andy, this is a long question. I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to suggest please post it back on the YA community so that we can answer it there after the show. Um, but we really appreciate it, people that tune in on Facebook Live. We really, really do. Okay, let's go back to the community because there are more and more questions being asked, and we still want to do live stream chat, uh, the live chat as well. Yes. Jeff says, does it even make sense to buy a used car? Used cars seem to be selling at MSRP range with five to 15,000. No, the quick, no, no actually, uh, one to two year old used cars are selling over what their original MSRP was. The Black Book Report actually breaks out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, for the, like one to two year old pre owned cars. They used to. No, they do. There. Still All right, well, I'm not going to waste time looking for it. Oh, yeah. the sales rate at the auction continues to, to stay low. Yeah. That means there's not as many vehicles actually being sold at the auction. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's come back here. Kim Michelle, I like her, her little slogan, car buying sucks. Uh, you know what sucks worse? Car selling. 
<laughs> you know, I used to, you know, people used to say, I really hate buying a car. You know, I come out, I just hate it. And I, and I used to look at them, I go, well, you know what? We have to do this four, five, eight, ten times a day. You think it's any fun for us? Not fun for anyone. Freddie, yeah. thank you for the kind donation. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's go, Pops. Let's let's keep. Where are we going? Let's keep rocking and rolling. Here. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm really glad I found yeah. you. Going to start deal school soon, but yeah. I am sure that I. Uh, but I'm sure that just like when I was in high school, when it's time for the test, it will be. It will go out the window. No, no. Yeah. My dad beats it into your brain. Yeah. I plan to finally buy a new vehicle next fall, but I'm already deciding, uh, dreading the negotiation game. Excuse me. I see that a couple of dealers have a buy online program. What are your thoughts on that? I know there will be a, uh, there's, there will still be back and forth, but it feels less intimidating for me. I feel like being a woman and walking into a dealership, they will take advantage of me. Uh, they will, excuse me, they will take me for a costly ride. What can I do so I'm not taken advantage of? There we go. Also, I have cash to pay, but I've watched some of your videos and others not to do that. Yeah, etc. Uh, I look forward to watching the live stream. Well, here you are. Um, what are your thoughts on these online buying programs? For example, you go to a dealer website and I think they're powered by like Roadster and it's like click to buy online. And you can. Yep. And 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 that they'll give you the price. They'll, they'll help you arrange for the financing and do all that. There are dealers uh, dealerships out there and um, and and um, Shomp in Colorado yeah, is, is, a, yeah. is a group that that believes very strongly in negotiation free selling. The prices of every car are marked. You can go online. You could you can you can buy the car online. Uh, there there's a, a Lexus. I am on fire. There's a Lexus, um, but I'm I'm not hot. Um, there's a Lexus deal. I think Lehigh Valley Lexus in in Pennsylvania. Um, that does negotiation free selling and they will ship the car anywhere in the country. So your take on this is it's positive. It, you know, the salespeople hated it at first. They love it now because there is no aggravation associated with selling the car. So short the prices, is, the, the prices, yeah. the, it, it, but there's, but there's, I'm sure many dealers that are attempting to get into that type of uh, uh, selling that uh, are, are not necessarily doing it. Um, to the T as far as transparency and be and prepared else. for the games and things like that, that can inevitably happen as well. Also we've got from Jack saying, I love deal school, but the videos are so short. We're actually working on, are we filming it next week? Uh, well, you, we, you met we, with we, we had a, we had a meeting yesterday. Yeah. What's the status um, of that? We're yeah. working on a brand new, how to buy a car. Yeah. It's like deal school, but instead it'll be like one 45 minute or hour long video with timestamps to break up each of the sections. So that way it'll be a month. We're, 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 we're working on, uh, structuring the whole thing but we were thinking well, um uh, that that we wouldn't actually record it until we can until we have a studio and it can be recorded professionally <sighs> and that we would all get together we would all come together so that we could do it that's not that i did doing it together yeah yeah I, like that. I just because i i think if we're if we're going to make it a longer presentation yeah yeah um, we created and, slides and yeah things like and that. and we're going to make it a tad more thorough yeah um that that it really should be done um in a more professional style i i might even put on a fresh new brand right, new yeah, t-shirt right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. we've got a thoughtful I, I've donation got, I've here got, i've got probably eight or ten that i haven't opened up yet so. got a thoughtful donation yeah well $10. thank you we do a lot of salvage car export and prices are skyrocketing too we noticed a lot of local buyers started to look for salvage cars uh, Salvage Direct 21 Corvette was sold over MSRP. Oh my God! I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't know what to say. You know, there, there, there are, there, they're stupid, and then there's like incredibly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah, just nuts. levels of stupidity that I didn't know existed. Gary F wants to know the interest rate on a lease negotiable. Um, well, the money factor, the buy rate money factor is set by the lender. Um, most dealers try to mark up the money factor a little bit so you can find out if they're selling to you at buy rate. And if they're not, then you can negotiate how much over the buy rate that they will sell to you. Uh, and Google search or YouTube search, YAA, uh, how to negotiate at least we get into the details of the money factor and buy rate and so Yeah. Moose Man wants to know, hey guys from Canada, I've been binge watching your videos and learning a lot. I'd like to be a premium member. However, none of the tools work for me because, well, well Canada, Canada, yeah, our, our, uh, our market price reports, um, they only work for, for US dealerships. That's where we, where we, excuse me, where we get our data. 
Um, okay, unfortunately, this one's a little bit lengthy, but all right, we'll do the best we can. Anyway, I put a $500 refundable deposit down on a GM CCR 1500 diesel. He gave me a quote attached as well as a build, basically MSRP with manufacturer discounts and $1,000 rebates for being a first responder. That's great. Okay, cool. Another $500 discount because I didn't want a sec- the security edge, but said it's something I do to all their vehicles. Yep. I told him yeah. the windows get etched, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, he tried on the first quote was to add car proof, a car fax report. So my question would be this, since we are heading towards September uh, and the 2022 model year release, won't that also trigger year-end incentives to get rid of the previous model years? If the truck isn't shipped yet and the 2022 start rolling out, won't that be a conflict? So this is what we were talking about before. Should you be waiting for the new model years to roll over or should you be just taking advantage of what's out there? I I don't foresee, even with the new model years, that there's going to be... a significant increase in production and a significant increase in the uh, inventory that's a deal or lot. Yep. So if there's a shortage and, and when there is a shortage, people don't really seem to care if it's a 21 or a 22 when they're looking for a car and there's not that many vehicles to select from. So I don't think it's really going to matter. Hey, I got a question for the and community. the good And here's go the ahead. other thing. When, you know, when people worry it. about when you go from one model year to the next, like if you buy a 2021 in September or October, yeah. while the 2022s are out, well, if you do normal driving, when you go to trade that vehicle in, it will have one year less miles than a normal 2021 would have. So, you know, in that respect, you can get the money back that way at the end because it'll be worth more because you'll have a year's less miles on it. Makes sense, Bob's. Sort of. At least that that was the that was what we used to tell people. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know, because if if you if you were to look at at a used twenty twenty one right now, you know, they, they would they would figure that the average mileage would be twelve to fifteen thousand miles. Yeah. Well, if you buy one now with zero miles on it, and and a year from now, you have twelve thousand miles, but but it would be considered a two-year-old car, and most would have twenty-four to thirty thousand miles on it. Yours would be a low-mileage car, and it would get a, a a value adjustment, a bump in its value, for having fewer miles. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Um, Michael says, "Do you have any tips or advice for placing a factory order?" We have a video. Just uh, YouTube yeah. search fact- yeah. how to factory order negotiate factory. Yes. Order. Look at that. Tim wants us to refresh the YAA forum page, which we will do. I posted a. Uh, poll on the chat as well if you could take a quick peek i want to know do people want us to interview or reach out to like reps at bmw or ford or well when you say reps what do you mean by reps like people who work in their corporate office oh okay and interview them on the show and be like what's going on you know they're probably going to be able to only tell us so much but i'm wondering if it's interesting or if there's other people or who do you think who or like people that work for semiconductor companies i actually would be really interested to interview someone who works for a semiconductor company if they would if they would be gracious enough to uh, yeah. to be able to speak openly and honestly yeah exactly yeah yeah all right let us know on that poll we'll come back to it in just a few minutes in the meantime pops we got to yeah. get we got to get grooving man we got to keep going all right I'm, sandra i'm not going sandy anywhere. yeah Hello, Rain Zach. Thanks so much for the opportunity to ask questions. Of course, a short while back, I thought I had initiated a factory order for a Hyundai Tucson Limited, hybrid limited, excuse me, and heard from the salesman. But now there's once again been no further communication. I'm going to need a car by October and feel as if I should just move ahead and change from factory order uh, of a color choice, only thing the salesman asked me, to outright request uh, to purchase first available inventory. Is this the right step to take at this point? I would just take whatever comes in without choice of color, which at this point, at this point seems a bit silly. Thank you once again for all you're doing, Sandy in Deptford. I mean, if you have to have something by October, that order is not going to be there. I, I, and if the salesperson stopped communicating with you. Yes, I, I would I would go up the food chain. Okay, that's the first thing I would do. I, yeah. I, you know, because when I was a manager, I, I, I used to try to make sure that my salespeople communicated communicated every step of what was going on with a factory order with our customers as it happened. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say all managers are doing that or, or all I mean, managers are so busy right yeah, now. Yeah, all managers might be requesting it, but not actually double checking to make sure that their staff is doing it. So I would go up the food chain. Uh, I, since you're looking at a, at a new vehicle, the first person I would ask for would be the new car manager and say, Hey, 
I was in, we placed an order. Can you tell me what's going on with that order? I haven't heard anything from so-and-so. Uh, has it gone into production yet? Do you have a VIN for the vehicle yet? When do we anticipate it being here? Did it, did it go through all that? And if he can't help you, then ask for the general manager. And if, if, if it turns out that either the order wasn't placed or it hasn't gone into production or they don't know when it's going to go into production, then maybe you would be better off just taking an available vehicle that comes in. Um, but in, in, in And if you this, put a deposit down too, I'd really be on there. On yes, the absolutely. No, you, I, I mean, yeah, you, you, you really need to be. You have to be in this market yeah. especially. All right, let's keep moving, Pops. You know, because if you don't advocate for yourself. We're not moving, but that's good. Yeah, if you don't advocate for yourself, you can't. You have to be your, your number one advocate. We'll help you. But we'll give you the confidence. Yeah. Igor agrees. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what this means, but the dad. Well, that's cool. Oh, uh, yeah. What that's does like, that mean? I don't know. Well, it's a lot of sad faces. Yeah. Why are you sad? My dad's not sad. I ain't sad. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Jen Jen says interviewing an economist would be intriguing. Yeah. You know, we should. We really should do. Um, all right. Let me let me close the poll. Let's see what the, what the results are of the poll and poll. Give it a second, Pops. It takes a second to load. It'll show up over there. Okay. We have two monitors. We've really leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see what the poll says in a second here. But yeah. I imagine... Oh, yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. 184 votes. 88% say yes. 7% say no. 4% say other. Do something else. Okay, yeah. I like the idea of someone who works in a, in a for a semiconductor company giving us their perspective. Yes. Because there's still some unknowns that we have about that whole process. Like Absolutely. Like, give us the details of why the heck this takes so long and also help us understand why it happened. Because the story that we've been told and everyone's been told is, well, manufacturers yes. stopped placing orders yes. and then it takes a long time to turn it back on. It's like, I believe that, but also like I want to know even more. So anyway, I like someone from a semiconductor company and then, yeah, some sort of economist or someone can help us understand like, like, Consumer price index stuff? I don't know. It just seems way out of whack. What's going to happen? Yeah, maybe we could we'll maybe, figure maybe out. we could talk to our good friends at, at Black Book again. Yeah, we could get Black Book back on the line. I, those they're, they're good people. Yes. We, can, we can talk to them. <clears throat> okay, from JJ. Yes. Sorry to bombard you with lots of questions. It's literally <laughs> what yeah, we do. Yeah, I mean, what else should we do? Oh, wait, but let's see. Yeah, but you, oh, know, you, JJ, can't, you, you gotta, can't write a book. That's some space <laughs> Well, you, well you can, apparently. Um, this is a novella. Yeah. <laughs> Someone stole the Cali converter and O2 sensor from his 2004 Honda Element. 2500 for repairs. Wow. Insurance issued a $2,000 check. Yeah. That, I have yet you, know, to you know, the, the stealing of uh, catalytic converters is a big thing these days. You 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 vamp or because I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, try yeah, and we, figure out what the I point just know is. that I, for whatever reason people are stealing a lot of catalytic converters. Is there something in there that's of value? Early this year, I refinanced my mortgage. Oh my god! Anything else I need in there? Oh my! Yeah, JJ, I, I think we'll follow up <laughs> post post stream. I'll hit the uh, I'll hit the reply button uh, and give you give you some thoughts. That's uh, that's quite the situation here. And let's see, Tim, who is in the live stream chat here. <laughs> I own a verified lemon. Okay. Hyundai admitted it. Okay. A 2021 Hyundai Palisade calligraphy. Wow. That's, that yeah. sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hyundai will buy me out, but I feel that I will be losing money due to the recent car inflation since they are reimbursing the MSRP I paid in December 2020. I'm also losing money since I have to pay for 4,000 miles before the problem started. Also, I'm losing because I have to sell back the vehicle service contract and negotiate a new one. Can I force Hyundai to replace the car instead of buying me out so I don't lose all this money? Do dealerships care about these situations since I'm really dealing with the headquarters at this point? Can I negotiate somehow to purchase a new vehicle, a new one at invoice? Do I have any leverage in today's situation? Well, uh, I I, I can I can relate to you how certain things work in the BMW and Mini world, and and they do. Um, uh, what's the word? I forget the word I'm looking for. Um, but but they will they will do what they call a trade assist. There it is. Okay. If, oh yeah. yeah rather than that. rather than brand the car as a lemon and do it as a lemon law buyback, they'll do a trade assist because there was an issue with the vehicle. And they will take the customer out of that vehicle and put them into a brand new vehicle uh, at little or no additional cost to the customer. So that'd be something for, for Tim to say to, to the dealership. To, is Well, to talk to, you know, 
hey, can we do a trade assist? Here? Yes. Now, I don't know if Hyundai does that, but that would be something that I would discuss with the Hyundai rep. Now, you very well might have to pay for the 4,000 miles that, that you used the vehicle before there were any issues because you did get some use out of it, yeah. and that has some value. But in the in the uh, interest of goodwill and to keep a customer satisfied, uh, I, I would suggest that they very well could just – Move you into a brand new one, um, and and do like a uh, um, a substitution of collateral if there was a loan on the vehicle, um, and and so you'd end up with the same loan uh, for the same amount of money that you have remaining, yeah, with the same payments, yeah, um, and and everything would be the same, including your extended warranty. Yeah, yeah, to, to, yeah. So so that's the approach I would take. I would first ask to see if they could do some type of trade assist as opposed to just a lemon law buyback. Nicely done, pops. Well, I don't know if it's nicely done, but it's done. Let's um, let's transition. So those okay. were all the questions that were back on. Actually, there's even more that have been loaded. But we're going to move over into the chat. Okay. So we're going to take a deep breath. You going in through your mouth or out through your... Well, you know, I'm a little... I'm a little... I'm Are a little, you? A little congested, and I know who I got it from. My bad. Yeah, you are. But you'll <laughs> sleep well. Um, no, I, I don't sleep as well. I'm sorry. Yeah, well. We're going to do live chat. Okay, cool. So start posting some questions. I'll scroll back up here. Let me see if I can find any that are. Uh, uh, here we go. Igor saying, contact the corporate Hyundai and explain what you want to stay with the brand. Yeah. Hogtown Biker reminding us to smash the like button or yeah. elbow it. That's yeah, yeah. Also. No, I like. Thank you, Hogtown. I, you know, I, I forget about that because I've been on such a roll. Skyler's in the house tonight. Nice yeah. to see you, Skyler. The next largest supplier was in Japan and they had a fire in their plant. Uh, plating sections, they weren't able to produce chips for about 120 days. Yeah. And then there was the droughts in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Dynamic Duo, Steve's the Lemon Law guy, Toyota News. I don't know if there is any new Toyota News. They don't have inventory just like everyone else. Yeah. Um, like button smash. Let's see Thank here. Thank you. All right. Let's see. What is the average margin on new versus used car sales right now versus normally? Well, I, I mean, the average margin on on new cars uh, from from invoice to MSRP is anywhere from like two to ten, maybe twelve percent. I'm going to pull up the article that you had done yeah. on that. Yeah, um, and used cars just everything is just out of control at the moment. Yeah, um, you know, used cars are selling for more than they've ever sold for. New cars are selling for more than they've ever sold for. Average new car prices. Uh, selling prices exceeded forty thousand dollars on average uh, for the first time in history. Yep. Uh, average used car selling prices has uh, crossed over the twenty five thousand dollar barrier for the first time in history. Um, dealers are paying more for these cars than they ever have, and they're charging more for these cars than they ever have, and and the average gross profits are higher than they've ever been. I just popped in the, uh, yeah, Igor is saying 25% up on yeah. used cars right now. I just popped in an old. This article that I popped in the chat is from February of last year talking about the spread on used cars, yeah. which is outdated. At this oh, point. my God. Is it ever probably yep. need to do a new one? Yep. Yeah, we definitely, yeah. definitely do. Okay, let's keep moving here. We've got, who has the best incentives right now? Um, Stellantis had some decent incentives. Yeah, it looked yeah. like on prior model year yeah. dodges. And, yeah, and nobody, nobody. We we have done comparisons from uh, for incentives for this month, this year to this month in 2019, yep. and this month back in 2017, 18, and the the um, amount of incentives are substantially lower than they've been. They're like and three fourths what they used to. Yes. Be. Yeah. So they're like a quarter of what they used yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, they all have some, I won't say they all, but there's still some incentives, but they're really limited and much less than they've been in past times. Dealer charges, chip surcharge. Is that legit? No. No. No, you, they they can say it's a market price adjustment. It's a dealer. It's additional dealer markup. It's whatever, but but it's not. Igor uh, saying here, no yeah. one has anything else any for incentives. Yeah, thoughtful donation here from Robert Peterson. How can you import a new truck? I saw recently that the only way to get a GMC regular cab with a short bed is from Mexico. All regular cabs in USA are long beds, even special orders. You guys are awesome. Uh, well, you can't import it. 
um, it, 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 the manufacturer has to be the one that, that builds it. And, and, and I, if they have a plant in, in Mexico where they're building them, um, they, they, you should be able to order it and it should be built in Mexico and shipped to the dealer. Yeah, and if they're not I trying mean, to sell it in the States. Because there's so then. many vehicles that are being built in Mexico now. VW has vehicles being built there. Uh, I, what was it? The Audi uh, um, Q5, That that's built in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Bob says, I see inventory staying consistent. Constant, Fit. yeah, for most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flow. Um, all right, let's see here. Stellantis. This is, looks interesting. Hey, Pop Shevska, friggin' Stellantis just recalled six hundred and fifty thousand of their Ram trucks. Well, it's good for the dealerships. <laughs> it's good for the service people. Yeah, explain that really quick. Dealerships love when there are big recalls. Oh, absolutely, because the, the manufacturer uh, uh, pays the dealer to do the repair. Uh, some of the best months our service department at the Acura store in Scottsdale had was when they were doing all those transmission. Uh, recalls for uh, for Acura. Uh, the factory pays really well for for warranty work. And their check's clear. Um, hell, they, they don't even pay by check. They just <laughs> electronically uh, send the money to you. We've got Vinny from Philly saying, do we know how many actual chips are in new vehicles? This is a question. So we, we, we read the same stuff everyone else yeah. does. People say 2,000. Yeah. People say 5,000. This people. is something... I, I listened to a, the, uh, a podcast with the Harley Davidson CEO, and he was yeah. saying it was like 700. I want to ask a real, honest goodness, person who's like designing this. Stuff. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I've Thousands. heard, I, I've, I've heard like 140, and I've heard like 1400. Yeah. So I, I have no idea. Yeah, we need to get someone on that mm -hmm. can actually really, yeah. uh, uh, really answer that question. Um, all right. Oh, thank wow. you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. We appreciate that. Yes. All right, pops, do the dance move. Okay, that's enough of that. That was in front of a thousand people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, when I worked in a dealership, I would only make an ass of myself in front of a few people. Now I have the opportunity to make an ass of myself in the front of you thousands. Can't, you can't be saying the A word. Took us of yourself. No. Nobody would. No. All right. We've got uh, from, from – uh, uh, oh. Uh, banks' appetite for changing standards for lending on used cars, given that prices are so high right now. It's a great question. We're having is we're seeing more and more cash down to get yes loans approved. That, that was I sent you those numbers the other day. Yeah, this is mean, like a week or two ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where where the amount of cash down has gone up significantly, uh, so that they can get these uh, these the amount financed into what a bank would actually consider. Yeah. So yeah. not only are book values up for obvious reasons because wholesale values yeah. are up like crazy. But consumers are having to put down more money to be able to get their loans yes. approved. And we, you know, you can still get over 100% loan oh, yes. value ratio yeah. still, but yeah. you're going to have to put more cash down in yes. this environment. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I had clicked on one a moment ago. Okay. Dance, baby, dance. No. The Ray delivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a wash used trade to a new car? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Because your your used vehicle is not worth what you actually what you're going to get for it. Well, and you're going to overpay yeah. for the new car. Yeah, but but if they're overpaying for the trade, at exactly. The moment, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I meant. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How much credit score needed these days for zero percent APR? Uh, typically, they they do that for the top two credit tiers. tiers tier one, tier yeah. two. Yeah. Typically, yeah. and your scores to get into a tier one or tier two are usually. Um, like 700 to 740 and then 740 and above. Yep, yep. Um, all right, let's see here. Just totaled a 2015 Highlander settlement, 24,000. Paid off loan, 21,000. Down on unseen. Uh, oh, put 21,000 down on unseen 2022. Palisade calligraphy, 500 deposit to hold. Financing through own bank suggestions at closing. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Negotiate before you head in. That's, that's what you're doing. If you can get it at MSRP, then yeah. jump on it. Yes. All right. Let's see here. Is there an honest dealer? Yes. There's lots of them. Yep. You know, unfortunately, there's lots more that aren't. But yep. but you know, the, there there are any number of honest dealers, um, and and there are any number of dealers that insist that their uh, employees and staff deal with their customers in an honest and open and transparent manner. Another citizen wants to know how far underwater are consumers going to be once the chip shortage is resolved and prices are in line with reality. This is what we're really nervous well, about. Well, right now, uh, used car 
values are about 25% higher than they were at this time a year ago. And so um, if things get back to normal, all those people that paid 25 to 30% more for the vehicle than it used to be worth uh, will find themselves in a deep ditch as far as negative equity is concerned um, two or three years from now. Yeah, this is legitimately what we're concerned yeah, about. Yeah, that, that's why we keep suggesting that if you buy a vehicle, whether it be new or used right now, to make sure that if you're not putting down like 30 or 40 percent cash, to make sure you get gap insurance. Because when the market corrects itself and the values get back to where they should be, um, anybody that totals a car three years from now that paid 25 or 30 percent more than they should have and didn't have gap, well, there's going to be a, a huge amount of of uh, of of the loan that won't get paid off that you're still going to be making payments for, and you're not going to have a car. And we've got a great article um, <clears throat> back on the YA website, yeah. joinya.com. Should I buy gap insurance? Yes. I'm going to post this in the chat right now. Uh, okay, let me hit. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you, 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 you know, most. I, oh, well, well, yeah. there, there's lots of times that I would never have advised people to buy gap insurance. I, I, I don't think um, if, you're, if you have your customer's interests at heart at all, that you can look them in the eye and not tell them about gap insurance today. Yep. It is such a prerequisite for anybody financing right now. Because most people are not putting 30 or 40% of the, of the uh, price down. Yep, yep. Um, so, and especially if they're paying five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 over uh, suggested retail price, uh, yeah, you're going to find yourself hurting if anything happens. We have from Brit Strong here, you guys are the best. Kimberly helped me with my VSC vehicle service contract. Mm -hmm. And because of YA, saved 10000 or more on my diesel 2500 well, It can still happen in this market. Yeah, yes, it can. And, it, and thank you, Brit Strong, for mentioning the VSC. If you are interested or if you're in the market and you're purchasing and you're actually buying a used vehicle right now, one thing for you to consider, let me go to vehicles really quick, is you can actually self-quote what the extended warranty should cost on that vehicle. So I'm yeah. going to go to service contract, extended warranty. You can do it right here. We partnered with AUL. We vetted multiple different companies before we decided to work with them. That's what the price is going to be. There's no smoke. There's no mirrors. And then you can schedule a call. And you know who you meet with? Uh -huh. The finance goddess herself, Miss Kimberly Klein. Exactly. So, if you're interested in, in a vehicle service contract or an extended warranty, get your free quote. Whoops. Get your free quote. You can run it right here. If you don't buy it, that's fine. If you do yes. buy it, that's great. We make some money. Not trying to sell it, just trying to give you options. Yes. And then we also had pops in the uh, in the chat here. We had a question: If I go to a dealership, should I pick the most green salesman I can find, then use the chef's method of negotiation to get the best deal? We should trademark that. Chef's okay. Method. Well, well, here's what's going to happen if you go <laughs> with the most green salesman. He's not going to know, or she. He, he or she is not going to know and not going to really be able to negotiate with you. So what's going to happen is that green salesman is going to bring out a closer. Okay, somebody that has the experience to be able to negotiate back and forth with yep. you. Uh, so that green salesman is just going to look at you like, like I don't know, a deer in the headlights stare. Um, you're going to end up talking to one of the sales managers or one of their closers. Um, and that's where you're going to have to try to employ the Shevska method. <laughs> we also have, um, my dad's talked about in the past, using the receptionist trick. Yes. So calling the receptionist and, and pretty much like saying, hey, my neighbor, my elderly neighbor, neighbor is trying to buy a car. They asked me for help. Yeah. Just tell me, who, yeah. which salesperson should I work with? Yes. Receptionist <laughs> trick. Roy's Place, question. A local dealership is offering $3,000 upgrade for an alarm system, pain protection, and wheel locks. Can I talk them out of that and roll some of the amount towards an extended warranty? Um, if that's your mindset, they'll be thrilled. Yeah. Well, perhaps. I mean, because they're well, going to they tell did, you, yeah. they're they're going to tell you, well, we already installed the alarm system, and but we can't take the paint protection off because that's already been applied, and the wheel locks are a thirty dollar item. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're if you're going to buy the the vehicle service contract, the yeah. extended warranty from them, there's a yeah. lot of profit yes. in that. Yes. So, so it's they, probably yeah. They 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 would they should be inclined to work with exactly. You. They'll probably be amenable to yes. uh, uh, yeah. All right, let's see here, Pops. Um, 
Experian puts out a good automotive market trends report. AG, post it back on the YA community forum. Yeah. I, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. We'd love to we'd love to see it. Um, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let me try and find. Um, okay, YA, a legal dealer. Yep, I just read that one. Got it. Gap Insurance, Joey, happy birthday again. Um, has YA considered offering gap insurance directly like you do via CZ? Yeah, Joseph, the... Um, it's not necessarily like the legal hurdles, but it's making sure that it's a product that we can stand behind. Like that's been really tricky. Um, there's a lot of like fly by night insurance companies out there. AUL has been around for four long, decades now. I don't know, um, long time. Yeah. And they're like, we can stand behind their product. Haven't found it yet on the gap side. Um, all right. What's Igor say? Closer with, will drill you for hours until he, she gets a commitment for a sale and make sure you're all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but the green salesperson's not going to be able to do anything because they just don't know. Pops, I like this question. Yeah, should I bring my dad with me to shop for a car? You know what I'm thinking of? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, now you, you can't bring. Yeah, because we have we have live chat. We have live chat. So yeah. I don't know if you're if if you're new to the channel here. Yeah. We have back at Join My A. You have a way to bring somebody with you Monday in your back through pocket. Friday, yeah. nine a.m. to nine p.m. Yeah. You can you can start a live chat right yeah. here with an auto advocate. Could be this guy. Yeah. Could be handsome fella. More than likely not. <laughs> but yes, you can bring an auto advocate with you. Yeah. Plus, you have access to the community as well to ask questions there. Yes. But yes, you should definitely take your dad with you if you can. That's what I did all these years. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Is it easy to start a franchise new or used car dealership? If so, what's the requirement? What's the process? I don't know if we've ever had a question. No, like this it's before. not easy. Yeah. Uh, first of all, if it's a new car uh, franchise, you have to be approved by the factory. Um, so that they they need to vet you. It's not like you could just say, hey, I want to become a Ford dealer. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, you can't even necessarily buy a Ford dealership um, if you've never been in the car business because they're going to vet you as the possible buyer. And if they're not happy with you, yep. uh, they're not going to approve the sale. Yeah, the easier way to get into the new car franchise business is to buy an existing one. And well, that is, costs- to, is to work. Is, is to work in a dealership and create uh, a relationship with some of the factory people so that if you can put together the uh, the money it would take to buy a dealership, yeah. you would you would get vetted and and, and uh, there would be a stronger likelihood that since the factory knows you and has had a relationship working with you, that they'll approve you yeah. as a franchisee. And then on the used car side, setting up a used car dealership, yeah, you that's have to different. get a you need dealer's a license. license yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Brett wants to know, is MSRP on a BMW lease considered a good deal these days? Um, I'm trying to think. Have we had anyone post? Let's take a quick peek because I, I don't know. Um, I really don't know. In the success stories, yeah, I want to leave. I don't know if anyone has posted a recent success story about a BMW lease. Yeah, That's I, where I would look and see if someone else has done better than that. I, I, you, look at uh, all these success stories. Yes, there's lots of the, the the problem is is that there's just you know there's a shortage of vehicles and it's you know, and and it's and and the shortage of vehicles is not necessarily everywhere. I mean, there are pockets of the country where there seems to be plenty of inventory, and then there's other mm-hmm. areas of the country where there seems to be no inventory, mm-hmm. um, and. If BM if BMW is telling their dealers that they have to drop the number of service loaners they have, that means they don't have enough cars to retail. And so, if dealers have a really limited amount of cars, yep. uh, yeah, they're going to get MSRP for them even on a lease. Phil wants to know, pops. He actually he yelled this. Yeah. Should a new vehicle charge fifteen hundred dollars for destination at delivery? Well, if 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 it's the destination charge that the factory charges on the Monroney label, yes. If it's a, a destination charge on top of the destination charge, no. Yeah, and, and Phil, I'm uh, I'll share my screen with you here. I'm back on the Join YAA website. I'm searching for destination charge here. Dun dun dun. We've got all sorts of car dealer fees, what you should never pay when buying a car. We have a breakdown of also the Monroney sticker, which yes. will explain this. So I'm going to, I'll post this one back in the live chat stream for you. But look at these resources in terms of like understanding what you should and shouldn't pay for yes. when it comes to actually buying your vehicle. Um, let's see here. Yeah, there you go. See? And, and in other parts of the country, there are no cars. Yep, exactly. Yeah. 
watts. Yeah. Is the transportation fee a legit fee that I should pay for the car I'm interested in is already at the dealership lodge? Is this fee negotiable? Same thing. Yeah, if it's if it's part of the Monroney label. So I'm going to pull up the Monroney label uh, guide now so that we can look at that together. So take a peek here. So we did this. This is an old video. This is, yeah, March 8th of last year. It's an old video with an old man. Yeah. <laughs> um, an old sweater, I think. Yeah. yeah, this this breaks down everything that's on the Monroney sticker, even linking to the consumer protection stuff. So check out this in terms of what you should and shouldn't, you know, be paying for uh, when you're buying a, uh, a new car. Let me toss that back in the chat. Got it. Nicholas says, thanks for all the knowledge. Glad to be able to help. So now we've got someone saying there are no cars in New England. So we've got conflicting <laughs> reports. There you have it. Conflicting reports. Yes. Um, okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> Alwyn Thomas. I'm trying to buy my first SUV. Horrible time to purchase. Yeah, it could be the worst until yeah. tomorrow. But what would you? What would be best for a young buck like me? Toyota RAV4 hybrid, Mazda CX-5, or Super Outback? Thanks in advance. I know which one I'm saying. A Mazda CX-5. Yep. Typically, the one of the Why best, are we both thinking that? Because it's typically one of the best value vehicles out there, and they have a decent amount of inventory. And still. we've been doing this forever now. Yeah. And the deals that we're seeing come through, are the RAV4s are ludicrously priced. <laughs> yes. I, we need a ludicrous ad lib. We, yeah, we, we, maybe we can interview ludicrous. All right, let us, that'd be fun. Yeah, that would. Oh, I actually would be really fun, because he's yeah. fast and furious. Yeah. Um. But RAV4 prices are through the roof. Yeah. And then Subaru legitimately is running out of cars. Yeah. I mean. So then you're left with Mazda. And Mazda's Yeah. But, but if you wanted a Subaru sedan, you stand a shot. <laughs> yeah. If you want a Subaru <laughs> asset. Act, no, asset. No. Legacy. Legacy. Or, thank or, you. Yeah. We've got uh, from Anaphylaxis. Thank you, Ray, Zach, and Kimberly. And Justice. And, and now Space yeah. as well. Yeah. I've well, learned thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be able to help. Kimberly, it seems, wants Ludacris on the show. Yeah. And I think Jen Jen does, too. Yeah. And, okay, I, okay. I'm officially, this is a before end of your goal. Yeah. Who in the community knows Ludacris? Put us in touch. Jeez. I'm going to start, I'm going to go on LinkedIn now and search, like, Ludacris press person. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's, 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 let's see if we can get him on. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. We went from interviewing you know, and, and even if we could, <laughs> even if we could just get him to say, and we could use it as a soundbite. We just get them to say, "That's ludicrous." <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Luda love. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, here yeah. we go. So Matt saying, "I'm seeing CX-5s with market adjustment of 5K." My area. What a bold line item to include on a window sticker. Explain how it can't be on the window sticker, please. Uh, well, it, it, yeah, it's the Monroney label is the Monroney label from the factory. There can be an additional dealer uh, label next yep. to it. Um, that would have the market adjustment, but it will never be on the Monroney label. Hit him up on Instagram. Speaking of which, I'm yeah. going to actually pull this up, Pops, because I think now is probably an appropriate time to do so. Yeah. I posted on Instagram today and, quite frankly, didn't get the love I was hoping for. Um, I posted this video. You yeah. can go watch it. But ultimately, there was this poll yeah. about what the superior milk was. Yeah. And I was wrong. Yeah, it's not almond. However, this very nice person yeah. said, uh, and who cares what those others think? You guys are awesome. Don't let the dumb bleeps put you down. Keep doing you, sir. And that made me really happy. Yeah. It's our, our shout out to say, follow us, your Advocate Alliance, back on Instagram. Follow my dad on Instagram. His posts are so funny. Yeah, and, the, uh, and infrequent. And, and you can follow <laughs> me on Instagram yeah. as well. And when Justin. was the last time you posted? I posted this. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean. March 26th. Okay. That's yeah. like pretty normal, pretty recent. Yeah. It's a good headshot. It is. I'm just a yeah. good photographer. Okay, yeah. let's go back to the live show. Cesare. Stream. Cesare did a great job. Yeah. Um, Melissa is starting the search for her third vehicle to buy yeah. during the pandemic. Yes. yes, this is all going to be part of a new Netflix series. <laughs> Hopefully we get a role in it. Yeah. Chris Johnson, thank you for the donation. Thank you very much. I really wish I could work for you guys and develop awesome web features that can help people. I love the website. Thank you for that, Chris. Well, and thanks for reminding me. We are actually hiring. Yes, Let me so do maybe another. you could. Wait, yeah, actually. <laughs> um, do you want to relocate to yeah. the Bethesda, Maryland area? If anyone on the stream tonight knows anyone who might be interested in doing product management or this lead to product designing, we need help with that. Or you want to be an auto advocate. We're going to hire a head of marketing. Let me toss this in the chat. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Um, that was a very thoughtful donation. And then also, yeah, yes. we are hiring and we need help uh, building what we're building here. So putting that in the chat. Um, Igor says, don't tell me it's oatmeal leftover water from a cereal bowl they call milk. <laughs> uh, 
Kirk saying beware of the phony Maroney. That can get you in jail. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. And, and yeah, you you have to have if you don't have it on the car, you have to have it in the car. If if we ever had them fall off, we would laminate them and put them in the car. Yep. Um, I'm looking to buy a 2014 to 2016 Porsche Cayman S or GTS. How long should I wait? You guys rock. Let's take a quick. Uh, how long okay. should you wait? You should wait till you find the one you like. <laughs> <laughs> so however long that might take. Kind of makes me, it brings me back though to one thing we didn't touch on earlier, Dad, which was in the Black Book report for the wholesale prices. We yes. do have the breakout based on different types of vehicles. Yes. So for example, cars overall wholesale were down 0.78 point percent, excuse me, yeah. week over week. But yeah, premium sporty cars were barely down. Yes. So we saw wholesale did you, prices. Did you notice that for the first time huh. since we've been tracking this, that subcompact cars actually went down? Oh, yeah. Every single week before this, wholesale prices on subcompact cars. Yeah, continued to go up. And our, our our rationale for that was because. Because they were the cheapest cars out there. So that, uh, But even even those, I guess, hit a ceiling. But maybe not. What, I that? just got on my on my smartwatch. Yeah. My dad does not have a smartwatch. A potential ludicrous lead. Okay, good. So Wonderful. YA community, we yeah. are in luck, potentially. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. put... I, no, no pressure on the person who just messaged me that. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, maybe I need to get in touch with Larry Maggot. I, I mean, yeah, he was a pretty big time concert promoter. You can, hey, you can do it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see here. Crystal says, can I ask if I'm negotiating? Do I say upfront about California incentives for a high road or do I wait until we agree on the price and then add the incentive rebate? They're probably going to include it's, that. Well, they're going to, they're going to, you, you negotiate the price and then you subtract whatever rebates, whether they be state, federal, or city, or county, or whatever. We've got Mrs. Lionessi. Lionessi. Um, how much flexibility do I have asking for a different salesperson? I made an appointment for a test drive and like the car, but not the salesperson as I was treated badly. How would you handle that, Pop? Uh, I, would, I would go to the sales manager and say, you know, I'm interested in your car. Unfortunately, I just didn't connect well with your salesperson. I, I don't mean any disrespect, but... I think it would be in everybody's best interest if you could assign a different salesperson to help me. From so here on go out. food chain. Yep. And, and, and if, if, if the dealership has any sense at all and realizing you're the one that's going to spend the money, uh, they should, they should accommodate you. We've got, I know I would. We've got a super sticker here, dad, from Chrissy. Thank you for the donation. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. We're going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, critical hit the mic. Yeah, yeah, it was critical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Put I that on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll we? take TikTok down. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Yeah. So much oh, for TikTok. Bad. Yeah. Um, okay, let's yeah. see here. No, the chats have come through. Okay, maybe it's maybe we're just Oh, oh, there they are. Okay. Hey, Pop, what, uh, would you want Ted Lasso to call into the channel? Have you ever watched that show? Uh, well, it, you show. know, it's on Apple TV, I think. and I, You have all the TVs except for that one. I don't have that one. I know what I'm getting you for your next yeah. birthday. No, I don't <laughs> want it anymore. Okay, I don't need any more streaming. Uh, you know, it, it would make my smart TV dumber. Um, MC says, my car is holding in value after a year. Should I trade? Yeah, oh, only if you want to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> And if you don't need to buy another yeah, one to replace I mean, it, you know, Sabrina wants to know what the hell was that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Abdullah says we have such a cool bond. You guys are hilarious. No, I mean, yeah. we were just doing the, yeah. the, the silly dance. <laughs> it was the sticker. It wasn't yeah, the, no, I get it. I can dance. Can you dance? Uh, no, no. But, you know, we would all probably pay money to see you dance. When was the last time you went dancing? What do you think I did last night? Cooked yeah. dinner and then yeah. a little dance. Yeah, it was nice. Really? It was nice. Wow. It was a good day. Oh. All right. Um, does anyone oh, really think the Does anyone really think the prices are going to drop and the product is going to increase? Do you think it's actually going to happen? Eventually, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you yeah. know why? You know why, Brian? Because the old model. Yeah. The manufacturers made a lot of money oh, that yeah. old model. Yes. They make money the moment they sell the yeah. car to the dealership. That's it. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. 100% sometimes personally don't click and you need a different face to buy a car from. It's common. We call it turnover. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, wow. Dance for money. Yeah. My dad said it. Not I. 
Mm. Um, I'm not dancing. For <laughs> All right, Bob. <laughs> this is taking a strange turn. Yeah. Let us call it a night. Oh. I think it's the first time in a while we've gone for 90 minutes. And usually we both have stamina trouble. So we made it longer tonight. Speak, which is Speak of yourself. <laughs> typically, I have stamina issues, so at least we both made it that long tonight, which I'm, I'm really glad about. Um, Melissa is giving me a thumbs up on my date last night. Yeah, Melissa, I'll, 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 I'll let you know. I'll yeah, fill you in. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have to be filled in first. Though. But I want to end tonight by saying a huge thank you to – we are now up to 2,000 members back on the YAA community. So Wow. It's incredible. Yes. We launched this maybe eight weeks ago now, two months is it ago? That, is it that? Six weeks that ago? Longer? Yeah. Very, very recently. Yes. Over 2,000 people on here, and I have to thank- Helping each other. I have to thank every single- I I struggle nowadays to get in here and comment on even a tenth of the posts. Yes. But I check the review my deal pretty much all the time because I want to make sure people are getting help. Yes. To every single one of you, the 26 comments, to every single one of you, including you, Dad, including you, Kimberly, and Justice, and Space, and all of the countless community members that are- Thank you. Yes. We set this up because we thought people would help each other. And I, when I log in at the end of the night or at the beginning of the morning and I see, oh, wow, everyone's taking care. That's huge. Yeah, so it really a is. Heartfelt uh, thank it, you. It, was, it was an idea that we had that just seemed to make so much sense to me. It, it's, there's, there's only so much that four or five or six of us can do, but there's just so much more that 2,000 of us can do. And, and that two thousand, and that two thousand will become ten thousand, and that ten thousand become fifty thousand, and 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 as it grows, there I keep saying it, but there's strength in numbers, and what's and our it promise? can bring and it can bring about the change that we want to see in the industry because the people will have to listen, and that's why I, retailers will have to listen. That's why, like the the manifesto, or any, I mean, like our promise is that as the front of the house here, like we're not changing the way we think about this. No. As the numbers grow, it's not because me and my dad get to like, I mean, we're going to go to a football game this year. That's awesome. Yeah. That's because we now make a living from this, which is incredible. But like, yeah. But you know, we'd the, go to a football game, even if we even weren't, if we weren't making a living. Yeah. Because, <laughs> it's because just how life, we is, life is too short and that's, you know, whether you can afford it or not, you figure out how to afford it. But my point, my point being our commitment is to the idea that, there's actually a movement here yes. that we've barely scratched the surface yes. on. And it's pretty damn cool to see yes. it like actually. Yeah. We, yeah. we keep saying it. You know, we do this, but we're nothing, absolutely nothing without all of you who participate in this, who watch the live streams, who watch the videos, who participate on the website, who, who help out in the forum. It, there, there would be no point in doing this if it wasn't for everybody out there. It just wouldn't be. Yep. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight, Pops. That was quite fun. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll give you the lowdown on the date after we hit yeah. the end broadcast button. Yes. Um, and Chrissy D just wants to know, so put 20% down as a down payment? Or more. And Igor, the team we support are the Arizona Cardinals. We were Cardinal season ticket holders for 10 years when we lived out there. What's this and, we stuff, man? You, yeah. you, that was all you. I appreciated it. And we, and once we moved from there, Zach and I have made it a point to try and travel all over to take in Cardinals games, uh, Cardinals away games. Only this year, we're actually going to fly to Arizona and we're going to take in a Cardinals Monday night game on December 13th against the Los Angeles Rams. And I don't know why we're doing it because they never seem to beat the Rams. Um, but, but we decide we're going to go to a Monday night game back home. Yeah. It should yeah. be pretty damn cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. And, and yep. can I say one yeah, other yeah, thing? Of course, please. Um, for those of you who are East Coast people know that 1962, 63, and 64, I know that makes me sound old. Um, but in 62, 63, and 64, I was an Eagles season ticket holder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were. Yeah. If, they, if they're if they not birds, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> all right, folks. Great job tonight. Thank yep. you, everyone. Thank for being you, here. everybody. See you. Uh, see you all uh, next Saturday, and see some of you next Thursday. Yeah, members only live stream yes. Thursday night. Uh, see you live here Saturday night next yes. week. Join YA.com. Yes. Any parting shots? Um, just love to all. Oh, yeah. I like that. Much love, as your mother would have said. Absolutely.